welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. We're going to be starting on part three of my Pirate Ghost series. And in this video, we're going to continue adding the watercolor to the picture and we'll also start on the inking. If you want to follow along with traditional materials, check out part one in this series for a list of all the inks and the watercolor that you can use and I also explain what Inktober is since this is the painting for week two of Inktober for me. We're going to be using Rebel 2 for windows and this is a watercolor simulation painting program and I'm also using Pure Ref which is a photo reference program and it floats above your main program and you can add all kinds of different uh, photo references to it. So I'm going to be starting out putting some watercolor into the hair and I want to make it kind of a really dark brown color. We don't want it real bright. We just kind of want to give some indications of some real long dreadlocks here and just kind of smudge it in a little bit and then we're also adding a little bit of some green to his neck we want it to look corpse like and ghostly so I'm also adding in some blues around the eyes and we're going to make his lips look blue because we want this to look like a ghost or a corpse and adding a little bit of some dark brown to his eyebrows here and then I'm just adding some to the decorations that he has hanging from his bandana and you can add dark reds and blues and maybe a little bit of black and also then we need to work on the background behind him a little bit so I'm adding more blue to the sea and we kind of want it to look like he's on the beach or he's just risen out of the sea or, or walked out of the sea. And so I'm adding kind of a, a darker blue color there to make it look like there's beach and throwing in some, some of the brown for the sand and just kind of smudging all that together. And you can use your smudge brush, which is found under your main menu on the left hand side and it works really well for smoothing everything together and that's what I'm going back and doing is just kind of smoothing things over a little bit and adding a little bit more red smoothing out the sea and just kind of giving it a, a real watercolory look and if you're following along traditionally Probably your flat wash brush will work well for the C and a number three round brush or something will work for the smaller details like the ship. And we want this to be a ghostly looking ship. So I'm using a light blue color and I'm not really staying within the lines. I just want kind of a haze look that you can get surrounding the ship and then we'll go back and draw in the the details and in, with ink but we kind of want it to look blurry and foggy right now and then I'm putting green and yellow on the knife to make it look real scary and ghostly like it's not a real knife it's a, a ghost knife I guess you would call it or something and that anyway it's an eerie color we want green we want these greens and yellows and blues because it's a real eerie looking ghostly color and it shows up well against the the darker blues in the background and then here I'm just kind of <clears throat> um, smudging things a little bit and now I'm going to start on the ink and in Rebel, you can also control how drippy your ink is. So I kind of wanted, I didn't want my ink to look real drippy. So I really turned the water down on it too. And then here I'm kind of turning off the color layer. I'm turning it down a little bit so that I can see the original details that I had there. 
And if you're following along with traditional watercolor, you should be able to see your pencil marks anyway, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But that's what I'm doing here, and I'm just trying to use some dark brown ink to draw in his beard. And with this program, you have to keep the resolution pretty low because it, it's rendering all these watery effects. So there's kind of a lag to it. And so I'm, I'm kind of making this a little bit sketchier than I might have originally because there's just a little bit of a lag to the the ink pens so I'm I'm given the details a little bit more of sketchiness because that seems to work better to actually get your line to show up good with this program and so here I I turned the layer off again so I could see the the details on the face and I'm working a little bit on the braids of his hair just giving it a little bit of detail and if you get things too dark you may have to go back over it with an acrylic paint pen just to get a little bit of a lighter color or you might could just use some gouache you just want to kind of show a little bit of some highlights there to show that they're long hair there and braids and then I'm using a dark ink just to draw in the beads that he's got hanging off his bandana. And you just kind of want to draw some details on the bandana here, a little bit of a design. There's a design on the photo reference that I've got. And I'm sketching in the hat with a walnut brown type ink color and just kind of make a just follow the shapes and draw a little bit of shading on it on the edges here and that just kind of gives a, a little bit of the contour shape and roundness of the hat and working a little bit on the the features of the face and adding a little bit of some design again on the bandana here on the side and you can use a dark red ink and Winsor Newton has all kinds of different colors of ink so you can you can get Winsor Newton inks and these won't be waterproof these will be uh, they can smudge with the water but there's other kinds of ink acrylic inks and stuff that won't smudge with the water so it just kind of depends on on what you're going to be doing with your ink as to if you want it waterproof or if you want it to kind of make washes along with your watercolor and here I'm just working on the folds of the jacket just drawing in the sleeves and around the arm just giving it kind of a sketchy look and showing the wrinkles and the folds of his jacket and again we don't want it to look like a real pristine jacket we want it to look old and raggedy and and sort of tattered like it's because he's kind of a ghost or a corpse so you don't want it to look real brand new and pretty and the same thing with the hat just kind of make it look sketchy looking and and like there's some tattered texture to it and then I'm working on the his arm here and I'm using a dark green ink and that will just help kind of add to the the ghostliness of the pirate and you can go ahead and and use the ink on the knife too just to kind of give it the ghostly look and he has some rings so I'm making a few indications of some rings on his fingers there and, and I'm working on the knife blade a little bit and just kind of putting the details on it adding a little bit of some texture to the arm to give it some shadow details there and sort of show the the form of the arm a little bit and then he has a bracelet or of some sort around there so I added that on with a black ink you can just kind of draw it on and I decided to outline the eyes a little bit better with a, a dark colored ink and that just kind of makes his face show out a little bit more and I'm just kind of going around and and seeing what more details that I need to add to the pirate there and 
just add a little bit more details to his face. We want him to look like he's not happy, like he's really scary and stuff. And so I'm adding some more lines to his face. And then for the ship, you want to go ahead and use a, a black ink or a, a gray ink and just kind of make the details real sketchy. Again, we don't need real big details for the ship. We just kind of want to show a sketchy look in the background because we're trying to make this a ghost ship. So we want it to look ghostly and not highly detailed. And so we're leaving the the fuzzy look that you get from the the watercolor. I want, you want to go ahead and leave that. And then you just kind of sketch in a little bit of some details there just so that it shows what it is kind of and that just kind of gives it that real ghostly look in the background and then you can go back over it a little bit with some watercolor just to darken it on the bottom kind of give that a a little bit of a silhouette so that you can see the boat a little bit better and then for the ocean you need to add the waves so you want kind of zigzaggy shapes and um, sort of banana shapes for the the texture of the waves and then you want to also the waves near the shore are going to have a foamy look so you can kind of add a little bit of white back in there use a gel pen or a white acrylic pen or just some gouache but you just want to add a little bit of the look of foam and then make some more zigzag shapes towards the shore so that it looks like the water is sort of foaming up on the beach behind him and just kind of smudge in some of the white a little bit and you can do that with a white watercolor too if you want to the china uh, i think it's called china white chinese white some of uh, some of them are in those sets and just add that and then here I'm kind of going back and smudging in a little bit more shadows here and you can do this two ways. If you're using an ink that's not waterproof, then go ahead and just add water to the ink and it will smudge. If you're using a waterproof ink, then just take some of your watercolor, the darker color, and just go back over it again. And then here I'm just working a little bit more on the facial features. And I wanted to, to make the eyes look a little bit scarier. And so what I decided is that eyes without pupils look kind of inhuman and, and they look a lot scarier. So I just got rid of the pupils in his eyes and you can go back with some gouache or something and, and get rid of the pupils if you're doing this traditionally. I just wanted it to look scarier. And so then I'm just kind of working on the hat and the moon a little bit. And I'm adding kind of a purplish ink for the clouds. And we just want to make these look real ragged and wispy and ghostly like in the background. We don't want these to be a major part of the picture, but just kind of look like they're wispy clouds over the moon. So this is the end of part three of my Pirate Ghost series. And in part four, the final part, I'm going to show how you can make the ghostly final effects of your picture. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.